So in the last video, we found from our first order contribution to the perturbation series, the correction to the energy EN1 by looking at the component along the eigenstate N0 so that our energy is now approximated by the original energy plus this first order correction, which we found was the expectation value of the perturbation Hamiltonian. To get the rest of the information from this equation, uh, we're going to look at the components along every other eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. Okay. And we're going to denote that by K zero. We're here, K is different than N. Okay, so remember over here, we're looking at uh, this N zero is one particular energy eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. This one, these quantities are every other energy eigenstate of this Hamiltonian distinct from the one that we are considering. And here it's important to remember that the energy eigenstates of this Hamiltonian uh, form a complete and orthonormal basis set. So that means that the inner product of uh, two states, two energy eigenstates is equal to the Kronecker delta. So it's one when it's the same state, it's zero when they're different states because they're orthogonal. And completeness is satisfied uh, by the following equation. So this is the sum over all energy eigenstates is equal to the unit operator. Just for explicitness, this is zero. If n is not equal to k and one, if n is equal to k. So we're going to take this equation and look at the components along uh, eigenstates different from n zero. So what that means is we apply a bra k zero to both sides of the equation. So that's our left-hand side. This is our right-hand side. Right, so we applied a bra on both sides of this equation. This term over here is again, our time independent Schrodinger equation from our original problem that we've already solved. So, This part is just E K zero. This part remains the same for now. This first term, we can take the constant out of the brackets and we're left with the inner product of two distinct original energy eigenstates minus this term. Okay, this is equal to zero by orthogonality. So remember we're looking at every state K that's, that's different from N. So there's no one over here, they're all different. So they're all 
equal to zero. Now we can take these constants out of the brackets. And what we have here is uh, the component of the first order correction along every other energy eigenstate except n. This is equal to this quantity. Okay. Bringing this over to this side. We have this expression over here for k different than n. Okay, this is important. The states have to be non or state n has to be non-degenerate with respect to every other state k otherwise you get a division by zero over here and this formula is not valid we're going to as a shorthand for convenience we're going to denote this uh, factor over here by delta h Kn. Okay, and the important thing to note here is the energies of all of the other eigenstates has to be different from the eigenstate we're considering. So there's no degeneracy between our state and zero. And any other state, K zero. Okay, so we're going to need this expression in a moment. Uh, this one over here. And we're going to use the completeness of the eigenstates of our model Hamiltonian to simplify uh, the expression for n1. So this should be the first order correction. So these should all be n1s. This is first order correction, first order correction over here. Okay, so since the energy eigenstates of H0 form a complete basis, we can rewrite the first order correction by inserting the completeness relationship. This is for all K. Remember this is equal to the unit operator times N1. Okay, so we haven't changed anything. This is equivalent to multiplying both sides by one. But now if we bring this term inside the parentheses, we got something like this. So now we get the ket of the energy eigenstates times the inner product of the eigenstates of H naught and the first order correction to our state. Now we're summing over all K. This includes K is equal to N. 
but we had said that uh, higher order corrections to our state are orthogonal to one another. Then uh, this sum changes from all k to all k except for n. So whenever k is not equal to n. Okay, so we have a, uh, a series expansion for n1 along our original energy eigenstates. And these are the coefficients. Uh, this is how we calculate the coefficients of that series expansion. Before we have found that this inner product was equal to uh, a term that we're denoting by delta H K N. divided by the difference of the energies. Then we end up with our final expression for the first order correction to the state. So there's a minus sign here. This is for all k different from n. This is just a number, so we can bring it over to this side. Times the cat K zero. And so it says that um, So the state, uh, our original state, gets a contribution to the correction in general. From every other uh, let's say energy eigenstate of the original Hamiltonian. And their contributions are proportional to this number over here. Okay, so this is our first order correction to our state. All right, so having done this, in the next video, we'll use this information and the first order energy correction to calculate what the second order correction to the energy will be in our perturbation series expansion.